Welcome to the Football Today show as we continue on through our journey of Euro 2024. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, usually joined by two bumbling Chelsea fans, but I'm only joined by one today because the other one, I think he's still celebrating a one-all draw, which feels very Chelsea <laughs> given their last 18 months. But the stats guy's here. I think Marcus might be celebrating that Italy 98th minute winner. We're all going absolutely nuts uh, on the live stream. Oh, sorry. Equalizer. Winner is in to get to progress through the next stage. That's how I'm gonna that's how I'm gonna say it. Because Italy was celebrating. Croatia obviously now bowed out. But yeah, very excited from the live stream yesterday and excited to be here. You got us cancelled on Facebook. Well, we didn't, but uh, yeah, lots of bots and uh, yeah, shout out to them. So thanks so, for ruining our Facebook. Yeah, uh, <laughs> don't check us out on Facebook at the moment. Please check us out on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe as well as Instagram, TikTok and X because we'll, you know, meta. Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> please let us back on. Like we actually, we didn't actually do anything bad in a shock horror. Marcus didn't say anything dumb. No, he didn't. Uh, but anyway, we start off the football today show with the yeah, nah. Stats man, you've written this down. Hit me with the yeah, nah. Yeah. Uh, should a third place qualifier be a thing in the Euros? Just obviously there's, I think it's six of, is it six of the eight or something like that? Four of the whatever Oh, four of the six, sorry. Yeah. Uh, third places get go through to the next round. I think it's a bit of a joke. Yeah, no. It's an absolute hell no. Yeah. Like, honestly, third, you're rewarding mediocrity. Like, mm. I'm all for 32 team Euros with 16 going through, but it's the top two from each group go through. Yeah. You have eight I groups. Agree. I want Finland to play Macedonia. <laughs> Get around it. Finland are awesome sick. in the World Cup. They got the uh, Viking Cup they always get do. Get me Norway. Get me Iceland. Let's yeah. go. Like, honestly. Having... You just want a Nordic uh, instead of the Euros. Nordic 2024. Hey. <laughs> or 2025. A lot of beautiful blonde people. <laughs> Sweden would be there. Oh, man. this I've got a new tournament idea. UEFA hit me up. I reckon we could do this. Absolutely. That would got actually be there. pretty fun. It'd yeah. be cold as balls. But... Yeah. All for it. Yeah. I think we're both saying nah on this one. Yeah. There's just a lot of teams. So like Netherlands, for example, they do not deserve, I don't think, to go yeah, through the next they, stage. They, they they would have been stiff to miss out. Yeah. Well, there's just a lot of teams that I don't think have had good tournaments that are going to be into that next stage and then they're just going to crumble anyway. So it yeah. should be the top two in the but group. But Hungary don't deserve to make it. No. 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 No, they've been shocking. They have they have minus three goal difference yeah, and they're going not, to the next round. Gonna get smashed. Who else you got? Croatia obviously bowed out. Slovenia. No, they're, they're out. Uh, Netherlands uh, is actually doesn't matter. We'll, anyway, we'll that's a nah. It. That's a nah. Anyway, a news ticker, one that we haven't added in because I just remembered it from this morning. Sir Jim Ratcliffe clearly hates females. I don't even know who that is. Do I know who that uh, is? Ineos, owner of Manchester United. Okay. So Manchester United have, in the last 12 to 18 months, finished like building this new performing uh, performance centre and everything for the Manchester United women's team, spent a bunch of money updating all. Great. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. What's Sir Jim Ratcliffe done in all of his wisdom because the men's team facilities are now getting upgraded? Booted the women out. Oh, I saw it. He's, no. put, he's put them into demountables. Jim, get your head out of your ass. <laughs> Come on, mate. This what? is great. It's gross, honestly. Mm. You build this amazing performance center for your women's team, and then at the first opportunity, you boot them out for the men? Come on, honestly. Yeah, that's dodgy. Maybe spend some more money on the men's stuff and put them in the demountables. Don't boot the women out because you're giving the men uh, what basically just been clearly biased towards them. Yeah. The men have underperformed too. Maybe give the women a chance. Their team's actually really They're good. They're actually good. We yeah. love Ella Toon on this show. She rules. Yeah. Bit of Mary Earps. Yeah. Don't mind it. Apart from when Sam Kerr blasts and passes through when Australia play England, that's a completely different thing. But Sir yes. Jim Ratcliffe, get your head out of your ass. <laughs> uh, we'll move on. More England. More taxi. England. Yeah. yeah. More good news. Yeah, their fans booed their team. That feels about right. I have said this on an, uh, multiple podcasts. I never think you should boo your own team. I've but never... this is the closest I would have gotten if I'm an English fan to do that because they should not be uh, a nil old game against Slovenia, which we'll get you, into. Is, is and not I was a good say, you in the last two years with your beloved Chelsea have been yes, horrendous. Yes. Your local AFL team, North yep, Melbourne, yes. has sucked for a decade. I would never boo either of those teams. And that's <laughs> saying something. So if we're getting close to booing, stats, the stats guy's got like the longest like <laughs> thing of patience about, ever. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, the masked man Mbappe, Mbappe returns. His mask didn't look cool. No, because like, uh, UEFA didn't let him use his really I cool worn, French like, one. I would have worn a pink one or something. No, it should have been an orange one, like uh, like the Ninja Turtles yeah, or a green one. Don't, no. they don't wear orange. I don't care. Whereas you go pink, fun. it's so far and out mm. that no other nation can claim pink. Yeah, he's back anyway. Yeah, he's obviously got in the goals. First goal at Euros ever. Yes, yeah. Because everyone forgets he's still really young. Feels <laughs> yeah. like he's been around for eight. How, how young is he still? He's probably he's like 24. Tw yeah, he's 24? 25. Still oh, 25, close. but he feels like he's been around for about 10 years. And given the hilarious nature of how this tournament's been going, France, Germany, Spain, Portugal now all on the same side oh, of the draw. That's a brutal the side. The French going to that side of the draw actually makes it a little bit easier for them because if they were going to be on the other side, it looked a bit tougher. That really ruins my France, Germany final call. 
Yeah. Actually, yeah. The, well, a lot of these teams just didn't finish. Because the Germans, well. Germans and Spain and Portugal are all going to finish on top, mm -hmm. but France finishing second in their group has just thrown it into chaos, which is great. We love knockout football. Knockout football is great. England are probably happy they don't have to play France on this. Yeah, but they're going to play Italy in the quarters probably. Ooh. Anyway, let's get to some match day wraps. Let's rep through these, get through them before we can get on to tomorrow night's games. Our uh, match day three is we. These are the games that we cu uh, previewed on Monday, so now yep. we're preview reviewing them. Albania beat Spain one 0 Spain rotated the team. Uh, humongously, I think there was like ten changes. David Raya was yep. in goals. Fran Torres looked good. They won. They won one 0 They got the job done. Do a leap of fans. Go to Glastonbury. <laughs> She's performing there next week. Oh, geez, he's done his done his research. I oh, mate, I am. You do have... Duolingo and then you research Dua Lipa. Yeah, so you're all you're all over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Je, suis, je suis Alex uh, un croissant, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> there Bang. we go. There we go. Oh. I want a croissant, baby. That's not Albanian. Your next one is you have to learn Albanian. No, <laughs> Steph <laughs> no. wants to go to Albania. Actually, why? I, I should say that. I don't know anything about Albania. It's cheap and it's beautiful and really nice. Like okay. it's, it's a lot cheaper than the rest of Europe. Not They've got very passionate fans. They're awesome at the Europe. They actually played okay in this game. I we had this uh, on our live stream as well. This was yep. sort of on the background compared to the Croatia Italy game, which is a bigger game. But Albania had were really good on the counter attack all throughout this tournament. They threatened Spain a couple of times yeah. on the corners and things like that. So they weren't too bad. Spain just got the job done. Tor Fer uh, Ferran Torres was really good. Yeah. Good finish. Good job, Spain. They go through on top. Croatia, yep. Italy, 1 1. Oh. Donnarumma saved a penalty. That was awesome. Uh, and then Luka Modric did score like 30 seconds later, but they left it to the 98th minute. I still don't know how to feel about Italy in this tournament. I said Croatia at the start would go out in the group stages. Uh, social, social gal Spence, please find that because I definitely said that. Yes, you, no, you did. I, I don't think they're that good because they should have they should have lost this game. Croatia, I think, was slightly better. There we go. Uh, Donnarumma had to make some massive saves early as well. There was a few long shots that he had to save. Their defense just looks a little bit off. Uh, so even though they did uh, progress because of that 90th minute winner by oh, I say keep saying winner. Uh, equalizer. equalizer. I keep saying winner because it felt like a winner. We're up and about in the live stream. We we're very excited with all the Italian fans in uh, in Melbourne. Uh, who was it? So Cagney was just. Awesome finish, top corner. Such a he was good like fading finish. one way, and he's just put a top yeah. corner in the other other one. Uh, so yeah, they were really good in, at the end, but I don't think they're going to go too well in this tournament. Either. So I reckon if they play the Poms in the quarterfinals, that's if the Poms oh, make the Oh, that is such a hard match to hatch to pick, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, France took on Poland. This was today, so this morning, uh, Wednesday morning, as we're recording, this was a one-all draw. The French absolutely mm. dominated this game, but just on, like like in most of their games so far, this tournament and all three of their games, they just could not put the ball in the back of the net. And it leads me to think, because we can talk about this with um, England later on as well, of the big teams that we've seen play three games so far, because obviously Portugal, we still haven't seen play their third game, yep. and Belgium. Of the big teams, who has been the best team in the tournament so far? And why is it Spain? It's definitely Spain. They're the, they're the only ones that have, what is it, scored in every game. They've they've looked a lot more controlled. Yep. They even rotated half their, or their, sorry, their whole squad, yep. and they're winning. So if Fran France can't get over Poland, that's a real wor worry. Is it a worry that... Yeah. Didier Deschamps now has this team playing this weird defensive style and yeah. not the open, expansive, attacking, natured football that they showed at the World Cup. Like, it was meant Dembele. It looks like he can only run in a straight straight line at the moment. Yeah, like, well, like in the World Cup, they didn't care if they conceded a couple of goals because they knew they could score yeah. three or four. So yeah. I don't know why they're not playing like that anymore because Poland, the only way they were going to score is a penalty. Lewandowski, and they had obviously. to retake the penalty. They had to retake it as well. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, so I don't know about that. France as well, they, they qualify out of the group stage without a goal from open play. That is a real worry. Uh, I know that we know their quality. Like, are, are we, yeah, are, but so what are we saying? Are we saying that we know the quality of France? They could just go knockout stages. Let's go. I think it, yeah, it might come down to Griezmann. He's missed a, missed a lot of chances in this tournament, but I'm a little bit worried about them as well. I'd I'd put Spain and, and a few other teams yeah. ahead of them ahead of them at the moment. William Saliba was also awesome. Yes, yeah, he's been great. Their defense has been strong at least. As said at the start of the tournament, you put Saliba in, he won't be benched. God bless him. <laughs> Netherlands took on Austria this morning. This game oh absolutely God. ruled. 3-2 awesome. to Austria, which goes back to the, you know, of the big teams who's the best so far. Well, the best team of this tournament so far has absolutely been Austria. It's almost like Ralph Ragnick knew what he was talking about at Manchester United, you Neanderthals. Yeah. Suck it, Cristiano Ronaldo. You don't know who he is. I bet you do now. They've probably been the most exciting team in this whole tournament, Austria. I, I called it, actually. We might have to clip that up as well. I said Austria are going to uh, put the Netherlands up, to, up down to third. Uh, they obviously won 3-2 in the end. Ralph Ragnick, is he proving he's a good coach? I, I think he is because Austria did you don't have just, a, Did you just have a stroke 30 seconds I know you ago? said that, but I'm just saying, I'm just going to yes. put it out there again. He is proving it. Ronaldo, when he first got to Manchester United, said he's not even a real coach. And I don't know who he is. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know, know who, who he is, is now. Yeah. Now uh, everyone knows who he is. But this was great. Um, and own goal kicked off proceedings again because own goals. Own goals is still leading... Uh, 
the goal tally isn't it? like seven now. <laughs> yeah. Gakpo's finish I thought was very clinical. It was it was mm. very cold. I loved it. Uh, and then uh, Schmid scored to uh, to go back ahead. Then Memphis Depay scored, and they went through a very long VAR check. I thought it was there was an offside to begin with. Yeah, it was, that was weird, wasn't it? But you know what? They found, they made their way to the right decision, and that's all that matters when it comes to this. Yep. And then uh, Sabitza. We said oh. we said at the start of the tournament He's he was going to have to play well mm -hmm. for Austria to go well. He scores. They they go up three two, and there wasn't really much danger in the, in the rest of the game for Austria there because. Despite Netherlands having a, more of the ball, they only had two shots on target all game. Yeah, their but, defense held really strong. There was a lot yeah. of blocks. There was a lot of yeah, really good tackles by Austria, and they're just that dark horse that could make a decent it's run great. here, which is unbelievable. No, not many people would have picked it. No, I don't. I, we said they'd go okay, but yeah. I don't think we thought. I don't think anyone thought that they topped the group. Also, Peter Drury calling this football match. Yes, Peter Drury was amazing in the Italy game as well. He, he's just a poet. It's he's just not like, a commentator. He's a poet. It's like keep me away from this England trash. Like give me all the other European yeah. nations that are awesome. He's just like I want. I want some good games. Yep. Uh, Denmark and Serbia was nil nil. They tried. Ah. Neither team could get it in the back of the net. This game was pretty boring. The closest thing that came to excitement was Eriksson had a pot shot from outside the box. It just missed, but it wasn't. This wasn't great. And then he had no. a corner that actually curled. It went out, came back in, and went into the net, but it was out. But it was just like... It's still a part of the one of the, I think, the, one of the worst groups in Euro's history where you've got Denmark finishing second on three points. That is unbelievable to England drop. only on five. Serbia didn't make it. So they were trying to attack, just couldn't get through Denmark's defense. That, this was not a great uh, a great group. As we move on, we've got to talk about England. This is the big breakdown. England, oh, my God. Nil, <laughs> Slovenia, nil. Spence is over there like cursing at the moment. Lots of people got up early in Australia to watch this or all over the world because this is supposed to be their, the big team. This guy knew. <laughs> Woke up and went for a run instead of doing that. Nice. That was less painful than was... watching England this morning. Having watched the replay, I watched it at, re I watched it at work because, you know, we get paid to do this stuff, guy. Do we? Yeah. yeah. Actually, no. you don't. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Apparently, Spence is getting paid. Oh, nice. Good for her. I'm jealous. Yeah. I'll have to get that in my contract soon. What contract? You signed <laughs> over all of your legal rights to me. No, that is going to be free Doritos, free, free cans of soft drinks. Beautiful. Yeah, nice. Uh, Gareth Southgate has done like the most wonderful job ever as a coach to oh. turn this England team that starts Harry Kane at striker, Phil Foden, Bakayo Saka, and Jude Bellingham is like their front four, and to make them into the most boring jury team ever. It's like listening to Harry Kane's face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is shocking how, how badly they're playing. Not creating enough chances. I will say, though, Slovenia, uh, looking at the highlights, did play really well defensively. They they blocked a, a couple block. on the line. They had a, a the goalkeeper. I was an odd black goal. Yeah. He's a really good goalkeeper. He's been doing it for years. So they were really good uh, playing defensively. They like, did put it in the back of the net, the Poms, but Phil Foden was about 17 metres offside. Uh, Saka, uh, Saka. Yeah, but Saka yeah. scored. But yeah. Foden yeah. started the move, started off offside. Yes, so... I just don't know what to make of him. I don't think they're going to go far at all. It's, it's just horrible. The fact that they finished on top of the group with one win is very, very lucky. But you know what? As, they, as the players will come out and say, oh, don't speak bad about us. We finished on top of the group. Yeah, but you suck. <laughs> yeah. You're meant to be fun to watch and actually enjoyable yeah. and trying to win the game, but you're playing this terrible game style with a terrible manager. It's like watching Port Adelaide in the AFL. It's like you got all these dudes and you just can't just do anything working, with yeah. it. Yeah. Sorry for the AFL shout. It's just a good co uh, correlation it is a good for correlation, people who you know, mix and match the shows here. Jude Bellingham was horrendous. Yes, he's a great player. He was terrible, but played all 90 minutes. Kyle Walker was so just as bad. changes a bit earlier. Conor right? Gallagher sucked, and he got dragged at halftime. <laughs> Cobby Mayne, I understand that, that sub. The rest of them. Anthony Gordon had about all of seven seconds. Cole Palmer came on. and Created the, two big chances, Cole Palmer, when he came on as The well. internet, like you, is losing their minds, but Cole Palmer right. didn't do anything great either. I'm very long. Uh, <laughs> but them getting next to no time, also not taking off Harry Kane when you got Ollie Watkins and Ivan Tony on your bench. What are we doing? Yeah. You have all these awesome dudes, but you've got the your guns who are sucking. It's like, all right, off. Let's bring on these guys who are hungry and will actually try something. Like the first time Palmer came on, he tried something yeah, that's and what I'm created saying, a yeah. chance for Rice. Yeah. It's like, hey, maybe we do this. It, it could work. Just we needs, could score. They just need to play a little bit more attacking. You've got Mbappe accumulated more XG, expected goals, than the entirety of England during the group stage. That doesn't shock me. That They only had 2.06 expected goals for the entire three games. Yeah. They should be scoring over two goals a game, not expected yeah. goals. Anyway, so that's okay. really bad effort. Do it here because Spence can cut it up. Yes. So we can cut it up at this point. <laughs> you are... Get, well, you're not Gareth Southgate. You're not I've as got dapper. a beard like him. Yeah, but you're not as dapper as oh, him. I could, I could rock a super. Give me your starting eleven, oh, and then I'll give my. Oh, starting I got no 11. idea. Right? All right, you I'll go, go first because I got no idea. All right, so for, also before I start it, having Luke Shaw and then you know not him not being fit, but picking him when knowing he wasn't going to be fit, just being a horrendous decision. Anyway, all right, I got to find you. It. Just do it, and we'll put it for socials, and people can check that out online. Oh God, I'm going to get yelled at here. Yeah, that's what that's what I want. Great. <laughs> all right, I would I would pick. 
Jordan Pickford, Kyle Walker Stones, uh, Gay here, but I put Trent instead of Kieran Trippier at right back. I would then play Jude Bellingham alongside alongside Declan Rice. Don't mind that. I would put Phil Foden in at a 10. And then have Bakaya Saka on his wing. He's, he he's, be. a, he's been okay. Yep. With Harry Kane, striker, as he should be. <laughs> One more chance, Harry. And then I play Anthony Gordon on the wing where he knows how to play. It's not that hard. I'm Australian. Oh, you don't know ball. But I can tell you what, I reckon I could do just as good a job as Gareth Southgate's like, hey, dudes, uh, here's the 11. Good luck. Yep. No, I think you've, I think you've done pretty well there. And then all I would say on that or is... Or it's just, either, you know, yeah. dump Foden because he's been absolutely pathetic yeah. uh, and then maybe play Cole Palmer instead. Palmer, yeah. And yeah. then just bring on... I think he just needs to make some subs a bit earlier. And But, yeah, they're not going to be too good in the next couple of rounds. No. I think. Or I, I say a couple of rounds. They could be gone... My mate that's a Dutch fan, he, he said uh, they might be playing yeah. in the Netherlands in the next round as well, which they could lose easily lose in the Netherlands. Is it, <laughs> I want England to lose. Not, <laughs> oh, really? Not, not I, because of the <laughs> obvious of how funny it is that I want England to lose. But now that like you're not going to win the tournament, so I want Bakaya Saka and Declan Rice to go home without yeah. getting injured. As neutral fans as well, we just want exciting games. We don't want nil-all games. Yeah, I think that's what's making me angry about this. <laughs> all right, let's get into some previews. Let's go into tomorrow morning's games. Of course, we've got four games before the round of 16 will be finalized with yes. some interesting things to play out because we have this awesome group with Romania, Belgium, Slovakia, Ukraine, all of them on three points. So, Ooh, yeah, true. unfortunately, it's at 2 a.m. Otherwise, this would be kind of exciting to wake Prime up Prime time. Anyway. Slovakia take on Romania. Romania are unbeaten in the against the against Slovakia. Yes. That's eight matches. Four wins, four draws against Tamir. Yeah. I think Slovakia though. Really? Yeah. Romania have been really good in attack. Vibes. Yeah. Just vibes. Just vibes. Oh yeah, yeah. Good analysis there. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, no, I, no I, one's here for my technical breakdowns of football stats. That's guy. actually very true. Either if, not, not for me either, probably, but Romania, I just think, have a bit more an attack and I don't see Slovakia scoring more than two goals. Whereas I can see Romania. They won 3 0 against Ukraine. And I think, yeah, Romania are gonna get a get gonna get a big win here. Cool. Two All right. Ukraine take on a Belgium. Uh Belgium, they look to find some cohesion yeah. in their second game. Two 0 win, yeah. They should be beating Ukraine. Surely. Ukraine look very bad defensively. Yeah, they bounce back. Please sell Zinchenko, Mikhail. <laughs> please. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think Belgium are going to win this one. They are notoriously inconsistent in uh, the big tournaments, but surely they finish off like uh, their strong. flag. It's like they're blue, they're depressed, they're yellow, they're happy. Yes. Right? Which, which one? Which and one is one Lukaku going to finally score a goal that's not offside? No. He, he just needs to just stay onside, but this, just a little bit more, and he would have scored a couple of goals in the tournament. I think he's going to score. I think I said this the other day when he didn't do anything, but I'm going to say he's going to score a brace, going to score two goals. Cool. Uh, moving on. Georgia take on Portugal. This one looks a pretty open and shut case, but Georgia is still a chance because if they can knock yes. off Portugal, they can go through. So Portugal, they're already guaranteed to go through um, on top of their group because Turkey aren't going to turn around the uh, goal difference. They're not going to score six goals oh, against you would, Czechia. Yeah, you wouldn't think so. No. So Georgia got a lot to play for. Yeah. I I don't think they have a chance, though. They've considered This what, could be fun to watch. They, it could be fun to watch because Georgia know how to score a couple of goals, yep. they, but they their defense is the way. They've conceded four goals across the first two games. Uh, Portugal also won 2 nil last meeting. So I reckon it's going to be very similar, like a... 2-0, maybe 3-1, something okay. like that, where Portugal win by a couple of goals. And finally, Czechia take on Turkey. Uh, this game should be fun because both teams, again, yeah. can go through. Uh, well, one of them is absolutely going to go through. Turkey are, in, uh, Turkey are in the box seat, given they're on three points. Mm -hmm. But if Czechia win, and then if somehow Georgia win, Turkey yeah, can be knocked out. So It's crazy. A lot of ramifications in this group, which, you know, third place is kind of okay in this instance. But it also sucks at the same time. So I reckon Turkey have wiped the floor. I, I really Whoa. liked their first game. I know they got smashed by Portugal in the second one. That's Portugal. But Portugal are just a class above. I think Turkey are a class above Czechia. I just I really like this Turkey team. Check out the stats, man. He's yeah. nice and confident. Yeah, yeah. I reckon they get the job done too. Cool. Anyway, that's us done and dusted. Quick in and out show here today. We'll be back tomorrow so we can wrap up what happens tonight and then also look through through all of the round of sixteen games. So we'll sit down and I think cover the ones up until like. Monday or Tuesday, and then we'll be back on the following Tuesday. So awesome. a lot of shows this week, a lot of content this week. Please make sure you like and subscribe on YouTube. Check us out on Instagram, TikTok, and X at Football Today, AU at Football Today Pod. Maybe look up the Facebook, see if it's back. Spencer's emailing Meta. You can actually moment. look at the Instagram page. It's still up. But, okay. Uh, oh, no, it's not. Don't worry. Ah. <laughs>
Insta is up at, to look at because I've, I've got some notifications on it this morning, but All Facebook right. not so. So get, get around the Instagram. There'll be some Good stuff luck. there. Yes. But also check out <laughs> AFL Today, Cricket Today, NBA Australia. NFL Australia is about to get up and going again because yes. the season's coming up. You've got the NBA draft mm. tomorrow. By the time you listen to this, it might be already going. Uh, AFL Today, we have the Midweek Madness Show on the Wednesday. And hold all tickets tomorrow. I have no idea who my co-host is because everyone's sick at the moment. So stats guy, you might be doing racing oh, tomorrow. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> anyway, shout out to Gerald behind the camera. Shout out to Social Girl Spence for juggling all the different things that she's juggling at the moment. And thanks to me. Good job, stats guy. Thank you. Catch you tomorrow. Football today. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network. AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.